Citibank was once the Philippines' largest ever foreign bank. They have a history embedded in the country dating back to July 1902, when the International Banking Corporation, forerunner of Citibank, established a branch in Manila. Throughout the next century, City Philippines would grow to over 7,000 employees serving the public sector, top-tier local corporates, multinationals, and financial institutions through its institutional client group. On top of that, in the Asia-Pacific region, the Philippines functions as a key hub, providing a wide range of value-added services through our City Service Center, CSC. Yet, Citibank had an unfortunate story, just like many foreign investments in the Philippines. In 2022, Citibank had sold out its entire consumer business in the Philippines, a transaction valued of over 700 million US dollars. The value was considered the City Philippines' net asset value, which stood at over 26.7 billion Philippine pesos. The acquirer was Union Bank, which is one of the fastest growing banks in the country. This sellout was then seen as controversial to some people. They may think that Citibank, like other foreign investors, are backing out from their investments into the Philippines. But is that really true? Are they leaving because they no longer see a good business environment in the country? Well, to understand that, let us first take a quick look at the Citibank's history. The City Philippines was first established in 1902 when the IBC established a branch in Cebu. Nearly 20 years later, by 1930, two branches would be acquired, one in Cebu and one in Manila. The two branches became branches of the National City Bank of New York. Throughout the coming decades, the bank would increase its branches, some in Cebu, others across the capital region, Metro Manila. In 1962, Citibank led a syndicate of 10 U.S. banks that agreed to finance a Philippine corporation's acquisition of all holdings and investments of the General Public Utility Corporation of New York and the Manila Electric Company of the Philippines. By 1970, after Typhoon Yoling hit Manila and nearby areas, FNCB Finance, Citibank's consumer loan affiliate announced in the newspaper that they would offer home repair loans at reduced rates with longer repayment periods. A task force was set up to process applications and approve loans. Despite working without electricity or water, they approved most loans within 24 hours of receiving the necessary documents. By the end of January 1971, they had helped 455 homeowners in the Greater Manila area. Four years later, City Core Investment Philippines, a new merchant banking affiliate, began operations in Manila. It was a joint venture with First National City Overseas Investment Corporation and three local partners. The services offered included securities underwriting and dealership, money marketing placements and loans, financial consulting, and investment advisory services. In the early 1980s, Citibank significantly contributed to the economic development of the Philippines through various financial and technological initiatives. In 1981, it financed the first unit of the country's first geothermal plant, highlighting its commitment to sustainable energy. That same year, Citibank introduced City Flash, a service that expedited the transmission of letters of credit and customer balances between offices and branches, surpassing traditional document transfer methods. In 1983, Citibank led a syndicate to raise 600 million pesos for the expansion of the Philippine Long Distance Telephone Company, contributing 150 million pesos itself, which helped modernize the nation's telecommunications infrastructure. By 1984, Citibank had established the Citicor Insurers Group (CIG) the first private insurance pool in the Philippines. The CIG included 20 non-life insurance companies that underwrote properties mortgaged by Citibank. In 1993, Citibank played a vital role in the Philippines' financial landscape through several key initiatives. Financial Institutions and Transaction Services FITS, issuer services, in collaboration with Citibank International LTD in Hong Kong, developed a $360 million customized depository receipt program for the Philippine Long Distance Telephone Company, PLDT, the nation's largest telephone provider. That same year, Citibank Philippines led a $173 million syndicate to provide pre-completion financing for the U.S. Exim Bank portion of a $933 million, 700-megawatt coal-fired power plant in Pagbialo, Quezon. This project marked the largest private sector investment in the country, the first major private sector voluntary financing since the Philippines rejoined the international capital markets, and the first 24-hour continuous power plant built in the past decade. By 2004, Citibank Philippines, through its Citibank Online, was named as the best consumer internet bank for the Philippines. Nearly a decade later, by 2013, City Philippines sold its thrift arm which included 10 branches to Banco de Oro BDO, Unibank. In the same year, Citibank Philippines had six branch offices and was named as the largest foreign bank on a number of variables including lending, assets, and customer base. In 2021, the announcement came. 
Citigroup, the parent company of City Philippines, said that they were withdrawing from their retail banking business in smaller markets, which included the Philippines. The country's central bank, BSP, said that they were closely monitoring the situation. Citigroup's announcement was part of a broader strategy to focus on wealth management and institutionalized business in key regions such as Asia, Europe, the Middle East, and Africa. Citibank's exit from the Philippine consumer banking sector includes giving up its local credit card businesses, retail deposits, asset management, and individual lending. These segments face stiff competition from larger domestic banks with wider distribution networks. This move is part of Citigroup's global downsizing program, which also involves exiting consumer franchises in 12 other countries, including Australia, China, India, and Korea. Citi will now concentrate its global consumer banking in four wealth centers, Singapore, Hong Kong, the UAE, and London. According to Citi Philippines, CEO Aftab Ahmed, there will be no immediate impact on operations or employees, and the bank will continue to serve clients with the same dedication. As of the end of 2020, Citibank was the 12th largest universal bank in the Philippines, with total assets of 331.32 billion pesos, a loan book of 153.75 billion pesos, and a deposit base of 215 billion pesos. The acquirer was no other than Union Bank. Union Bank is a major Filipino bank, but is not one of the largest banks like BDO, BPI, and Metro Bank. This acquisition showcases their hunger for growth. The acquisition included not only Citibank's business, but also its employees. According to Union Bank's president and CEO, Edwin R. Batista, acquiring Citibank Philippines' consumer banking business, including the third largest credit and franchise, and a leading wealth management provider, offers a game-changing opportunity to expand in the higher-end consumer market. Citibank's consumer banking assets include 89.5 billion pesos, with gross loans of 59.7 billion pesos, total liabilities of 71.7 billion pesos, including deposits of 67.8 billion pesos, investments AUM of 95 billion pesos, and nearly 1 million customers. Union Bank will pay Citi a cash consideration for the net assets, plus a 45.3 billion pesos premium. The total acquisition cost, including required equity, is approximately 55 billion pesos, financed through internal resources and a stock rights offering, SRO, with support from Aboetis Equity Ventures, Insular Life Insurance, and Social Security System. So, why did Citibank leave the Philippines? Well, the first reason is the consolidation of business. They are leaving the consumer business and focusing on businesses that matter to them the most. But the real reason is because Citibank is actually a stagnant business. Citibank, like Intel, is seeing a slowdown due to competitors. Intel back then was battling the 2008 financial crisis, which led to big losses in the company. That is one of the reasons why they could not keep funding their factory in the Philippines. Citibank today is also one of the banks that are losing against both local and international competitors. Citigroup's market capitalization, which is the company's valuation, has not moved since 2001. In 2001, ticker symbol C for its stock saw the company's entire value to stand at over $281 billion. Today, they are worth only $122 billion, which is less than half of what it was two decades ago. For two straight decades, Citigroup's valuation did not grow, which signifies that the company has its own issues and not about the Philippine domestic market. After all, when they announced that they were leaving the Philippines, they were also leaving other key markets. Hence, one should not blame the Philippine economy, but rather blame the entire company and their overall strategy. Furthermore, it is even better for a local company to acquire Citibank's local business. That means whatever profit the company makes stays in the Philippines. If Citibank continues to profit from the Philippines, then they will take that money out of the country and possibly use it elsewhere. But anyway, do let us know what you think down in the comments section below. Thanks for watching.